Oh, there it is, you guys. Welcome to CCXRC. I'm Tony, and boy, is this an awesome day. I want to tell you guys about this little tiny micro monster truck we got right here. We're going to talk about the build process of it and where you can get this really sick chassis that is underneath this little toy body I got from Target to put on it. So let's do it. Alrighty, you guys, so here it is. This is the magic that goes into this right here. This is the Southwest Monster Shop's Tiny Titan chassis. It's got two carbon fiber plates that run down it, and then it's got some supports that go in here. Some of it's 3D printed, but then you've also got these metal cross members and stuff that are threaded, so you can uh, use it to kind of set the width of this and get it ready to go. It's really cool because these are based off of the uh, SCX24 platform. I've actually got the uh, truck right here that I scabbed it from. You can see the chassis <laughs> is all that's left inside of here right now. But um, the battery tray comes out of it and it's got the holes that match up and it mounts right in there. You'll see it as you're taking it apart. Keep those screws, same screws go in that you took it off. Same with the electronics tray. Mine's kind of tucked up here in the top. You can see the things glowing in there. Those are sitting on the electronics tray that came from the original one. Now it has body posts on it, so if you get a different body and you wanna use those body posts to mount the body, you can do that. I thought I was gonna do Velcro instead. I cut them off, um, but in, I ended up using this Spin Master toy from Target. It was a RC truck and um, it fits on here perfectly. So I opted to go this route and um, it fit on here good. It locks in there and I just have it zip tied up front onto one of the cross members. You can see in the back here how it was uh, attached and it was, um, there was a bar that went across here, plastic, and I just cut it off on the sides and then cut it in the middle. And uh, I left enough of it that I could turn them so that they would hit and clip on to the back chassis here. And so I have to kind of squeeze it in there and it locks it in there. Boom, nice and tight. So that is rigid. I mean, I can hit it and it doesn't pop up. It just locked right in there. Super slick way to do it, you guys. Shake it, it's not coming off. Locked on there nice and tight. Um, they also have the, the um, grave digger ones that you could get as well, like this one. This is running off of a 3D printed chassis from ECB Printing, so it's a little bit different setup. Uh, uses a deadbolt uh, setup instead of the C10 that I use for this one as far as what links you need in order to do it. So let's talk about what you do need in order to complete one of these trucks of your own because you can't buy these in the store like this, um, especially fast ones ready to go. There, I, I've said that there's about four things that I highly recommend, maybe five, if you were to get into this. So let's talk about what those are. So first off, you need to get your chassis and your wheels. And the wheels are also from Southwest Monster Shops. So they are the plastic inserts here that allow you to buy these AMT monster truck tires. So you do have to get those. Wheels and tires. Um, the tires you get on eBay or at a hobby shop, uh, they're model truck tires. So for a 124 scale model, that's what these are. And uh, they're rubber. You don't need any foams in them or anything. They're pretty rigid. Um, and the wheels are made for them to drop right on. You can glue them on if you want. Mine aren't glued. I just have them on here for now. Um, so that is the one thing you need along with the chassis. That kind of gets it all set up. You need the SCX24, but the hop-up parts that you need, first of all, the main thing I think is brushless motor, in my opinion. Otherwise, you're just crawling over stuff and it's very slow. So that, uh, this is set up using the Furtech Lizard ESC, and it, you have to get the Bluetooth one. There's a, a module on mine here. I'm trying to get it so I can show it a little bit. 
Um, it's, it's next to my uh, receiver here. They're just stuck to the side of it. That little thing there is a 20 amp ESC, that blue glowing. Um, and it's Bluetooth. And it allows me to go on my phone and set the punch levels. I can set, um, I can, you know, get my radio to do uh, the endpoints for the throttle. And you can also do change the motor from clockwise to counterclockwise, which I needed to do for mine, um, which was very easy to do. And then um, what else do we do in there? I think that was it. You can set your reverse speed as well if you wanna change your reverse speeds. So there's a lot of different settings you can do and it's very handy. Um, so that and then a brushless motor. The one that I found out about is what Michael McKenzie used. And a lot of these parts are from the build that he did for this tiny Titan chassis right here from Southwest Monster Shops. Uh, and he was finding out and trying different things. And what he found was a Surpass 1220 size motor with um, 80 some hundred KV. I got an 8600 KV. And the reason is it's a direct fit to the motor plate if you don't want to get a different transmission. I upgraded my transmission, but you don't have to. Um, so if you're trying to keep costs down, that's one way to keep them down. Um, and it's pretty quick. So uh, that is what we're talking about right there. That's some decent wheel speed for this. This motor is under 20 bucks on Amazon. Uh, so you're looking at about 65 bucks for the ESC Bluetooth combo and then about 20 for that. So you're about 80 bucks. So we'll say that the motor ESC combo is one of the top upgrades that you have to do, otherwise it's slow. The other thing that you have to do, in my opinion, is upgrade the servo in the front. I'm running the Hitech 5065 MG. It's a Metal Gear uh, servo. It's very fast and has power, which is great for this. Uh, they're not terribly expensive, but you can also go, a lot of people do the Emacs ones. Um, I've got links to it down below to both options for it. Or you've also got the Reefs 99 Micro is a very powerful micro servo, which I run in my other one. This is my brushed one that crawls over things and is gonna get the same motor upgrade. I've got them in a box ready to go into it. Um, so that one is uh, running the Reefs servo and it's awesome too. So we've been testing out different ones, just seeing how they all work. And I'd say that they work pretty good. The Reefs one's definitely pretty, pretty awesome. Um, but I do find that this high tech is very quick as well. Um, and the Emacs isn't far behind and it's only 12 bucks or so. So if you're trying to keep it a budget build, that would work. Uh, the hot racing Emacs servo mount you want, it's a metal mount and allows you to put the servos in there, whether it's the Reefs one, the high tech one, or the Emacs one, it allows it to mount in there super easy. I think the steering links are good. I don't think it's a must, um, but having metal links when you're pushing with that power is good, good thing. So I'd say motor ESC, you gotta do the, the servo and the shocks as well. These are longer, taller shocks, give it lots of room to compress and look scale and stand the truck up a little bit over the uh, stock shocks. Yes, he's got a whole bunch of mounting options here. You could go lower with the stock ones, but you're still gonna be squatting a lot more and not have the travel that this one has. So those are it. And the other thing is with the transmission, you wanna do the high tech makes one. I got it right here. This is a 0.5 mod spur gear conversion. And it just, the teeth on this are much bigger than on the stock one. And it's easier to line up mesh. And uh, if you get that surpass, one of the nice things about it is the pinions are a direct fit. The shaft size is the same as the brush motor that comes in the SCX24. So this fits on there, just slides on and you're good to go. You don't have to get another pinion, try and figure out what size, how many teeth, whatever. It's right here. You put it on that surpass motor and you drive it. Super cool. All right. So that's must-haves. Um, I think that's it. So if I were to ha tell somebody if they wanted to do this on the cheap and not do what I did, uh, which is upgrade just about everything, uh, I would say servo, the servo mount, the ESC motor, and that mod gear on there, and then the shocks. These, uh, these are the hot racing Tele shocks, and they're nice and long. Um, so those are what I would do. 
Uh, what I ended up doing though was go beyond all of that and I got the Mofo RC transmission. It's a bulletproof transmission and it has a brass plate on the bottom as well for added weight. And I wasn't sure if that was gonna be some of the detriment, but it actually, this truck hits and sticks. <laughs> I mean, it's crazy. It's that low weight. It lets the shocks do their job. It pulls them down, makes them work. And uh, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm very impressed with how it hits and sticks like that. It's insane. Um, a couple things to note when you are building this. I'll talk about my upgrades. So I did that. And um, one of the issues that I ran into was I ended up going with the hot racing metal drive shafts and it was a very tight fit to get them onto the Mopo RC output shafts on their bulletproof transmission. Very tight. It wasn't tight on this um, going onto the trail output shaft of the worm gear. Just on this side, it was very tricky. Um, I don't think you'd have that if it was the stock transmission is all I'm gonna say. And I don't think you have to upgrade the whole transmission. I chose to because I wanted to go bulletproof with this and just make it you know, super beefy. Uh, I also put on hot racing axles, um, which are metal as well. And then we put treel overdrive gears into both axles. So when I was taking it apart, I swapped out the worm gears with the overdrives front and rear to give more speed that way. So where I might not have all the speed I need from the motor, we're overdriving the front and rear axles to get a little bit more speed even out of it. So that's something to, to note. Oh, the other thing to note is with the motor, when you install the motor. All right, so I was able to get the motor mounted and it was very tricky because none of the stock screws from the SCX worked. I had to actually go in and get some from one of my like uh, beadlock wheel sets that I had that were spares and use those because of the size of this. If you use the stock um, transmission, you should be better off because it should just go straight in. But you still are going to have issue with the bolt size because they were too small. Um, the, the ones that are for the chassis and then the ones that they had in the motor were too big. So I had to kind of adapt and uh, got lucky I had something around. But you can see we're spinning all right. Uh, as much as everything else about it was plug and play, that was not one thing that was plug and play. Um, you need, I think it's a 1.5 millimeter by five millimeter screw. And it's basically a Latrax part from Traxxas. And you can order it online and get them. I would say to get them when you order your motor and make sure you have them on hand and have extras. Uh, all the rest of the stuff pretty much works. All the screws <laughs> throughout the rest of the build are very similar um, to the other SCX24 ones except for that. So kind of, a, kind of an important thing when you're building it to have a screw to be able to mount the motor. So that's something to note. Um, what else do I run into when I was building this that was issues? Um, axles were good. The only other thing with the axles was that they, they're shaped different than the stock axles. And so the, um, the mounts that they send you to do the dual, um, dual shocks don't fit. There's a little nub on it that actually, you know, fits into a spot on the axle to kind of lock it in place. Um, on here, it's just got this little bump and that bump area doesn't match with this one. And so it's going to be, I'm going to have to do some cutting or grinding or something to get it to fit on mine. And, um, I don't have the other shocks yet anyway. They're, they're ordered by uh, crawler space RC here locally. Um, I, I, I'd seen him when I was there that he had some and I reached out to him and he just sold some, but he said he was getting more in. So I'm going to get them from him. Um, I did get some of my other parts from Reaction RC Hobbies on this one as well. Uh, like I said, I got from Mofo RC. Got a lot of it from Hobbytown. I was buying stuff for these even before we moved, guys. The other thing is speed. I, I was talking with Michael McKenzie, and I just couldn't figure out why his looked faster, jumped better than mine. And it's, a, it's something that I've talked with people about before and I didn't think about. But the more you tighten these axles or these nuts on your wheels, the more it binds the axle and it doesn't turn very well. So uh, just by loosening that, it's given me so much more speed. So I have some jump footage that I'll show you guys here, but it was basically, it was like dropping like a rock. And so 
I couldn't figure out what was going on. I thought maybe this brass weight was too much um, and some of the axles being metal was too much, but no, it wasn't. I think it was that I had the wheels tightened too much. So we've definitely got more speed going now. But man, you guys, this thing is just an absolute joy to drive. So let me just show you guys right quick. It's pretty good. I don't have a long runway, but we will try to get a little jump action going here. Yeah. That's with no runway, guys. I'm like not even a foot away from the jump. <laughs> so cool. Um, here, we'll just hit it. <laughs> a little sky wheelie action. Oh, it's almost faster in reverse. Well, maybe it's just the curve on that. There we go. Oh, oh, up the table. So there you have it, guys. Check that out. So get some extra wheel nuts for it in case they do come off when you loosen them up. Throw some Loctite on there. You're good to go. And get out and have some fun, guys. Rip it. Ooh. <laughs> but you can see it. It's quick. That's for sure. Anyway, guys, I'm so excited about this. It's getting cold, and I love the monster trucks, and I was really bumming now that we're here in Michigan that winter. I really wouldn't be able to run them that much, but now we'll be able to have some races down in the basement. Like I said, I'm going to still do these ones as well. This is the ECB uh, version of uh, a micro monster truck, and so we're going to put brushless in this as well, and we'll jack it up with some bigger shocks and uh, have some fun uh, running these things. Thanks for tuning in. As always, guys, hope you found this informative. Be sure to check the links in the description below, guys. They are affiliate links. They do benefit the channel. But check your local hobby shop. See what they can order up for you. Uh, they can get a lot of the parts. Some of them, like the Surpass Motor, maybe not. But I got links for all that stuff down in the description below, guys. Have fun, RCN, and we'll catch you next time.